Hello, welcome to English Literature with Susan. Today I'm here with Robert Frost's famous poem, Out, Out. Why the title of the poem is Out, Out, let us see. Uh, so please remain with me. Hello, welcome to English Literature with Susan. Today I'm here with Robert Frost's famous poem, out out and why the title of the poem is out out stay with me till the end of the video so that you will see why uh let's go to the text of the poem the poem happens in forum what well, formerly was new england america in massachusetts around boston uh and uh, we have to know that robert frost is uh, technically speaking, a part of America, so he focuses on American landscape, American theme, American life, and also Robert Frost in his poems uh, uses lots and lots of tools um, and devices. And uh, by, by tools and devices, I mean tools and devices we we use uh, in daily life, not, not the ones necessarily used in a poem. So. Oh, he starts like this, that the basso snarled and rattled in the yard. And from the very beginning, we see that the basso, it seems, has a life. So it snarls and rattles um, and made dust and dropped the stove length sticks of wood, sweet scented stuff when the breeze drew across it. So uh, the, the first scene seems to be um, very, a very normal, it's normal life, and also we we can smell the scent of the freshly cut wood. So um, the atmosphere of the poem is the, the one to be positive here, and from there, those that lifted eyes could count five mountain ranges, one behind the other, under the sunset, far into Vermont. So again, we have a beautiful scene taken from nature. There are five mountain ranges. You can see them one behind the other. And also we have, oh, the image of the sunset. Okay, it can be also a dramatic scene. Oh, we have the sunset anyway. And in the sunset, people feel nostalgic, emotional, but don't forget, that sunset in literature is the sign or the symbol of something which we are going to see. And the soul snarled and rattled, snarled and rattled. Here back to the first scene, as it ran light or had to bear a load. Uh, this is the device, and uh, suppose, not, not exactly in this shape or in this form but anyway uh the sound changes as if as if it's for it is working uh, within the uh within the truck and when it comes out so the load is taking is different so uh does the sound of it like this And nothing happened. Day was all but done. So what is the purpose of this poem? To explain that how a bus snarled and rattled, or to tell us that we can see five mountain ranges, one part, one be behind the other in Vermont. Let's see. Call it a day. I wish they might have said to please the boy by giving him the half hour that a boy counts so much when when saves from work. Uh oh, we're dealing with child labor. Or anyway, a child or an adolescent boy has to work here. Oh, maybe maybe he does it for fun. Anyway, uh, they they expect the work to to end. The speaker at least. Uh, expect such a thing that the poem uh, or sorry uh the work would end sooner so that the child 
would go to work. So we have a kind of a twist in the story. We have a new character besides nature and the boss. So in this poem and the young bug. His sister stood beside him in her apron to tell them supper. So we have another character, the young boy says there, who is in there to say that supper is ready. Uh, the word, the saw, not the boy, but the saw, as if to prove Saul knew what supper meant, leaped out of the boy's hand, or seemed to leap because it doesn't have life. And here we have another example of personification. He must have given the hand. Uh, it, it, it's as if that the, the saw wants to make a handshake with the boy and the boy has to give the hand and it's not safe to give a handshake to a boss saw because it would cut your hand. However it was, neither refused the meeting, but the hand uh, the result of the meeting of the two is, is the cottage of the hand. The boy's first outcry was a rueful laugh, the state of denial when, when we go through a catastrophe, as he swung toward them, holding up the hand, half in appeal, but half as to keep the life from spilling. And he tries to keep the hand in its place. The hand is caught, but he's pushing it to its place. It's uh, to, to its place. It's such a such a sorrowful scene, uh, but half as if to keep the life from spilling, as if he's also losing his life, and therefore maybe the sunset sign we had at the beginning. Then the boy saw all. The boy saw all. Uh, saw here is a kind of playing like a pun uh, that he saw um, as the past past parts of 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 say and also saw like the boss saw since he was old enough to know big boy doing a man's work anyway he is a big boy doing the man's work though a child at heart he saw all spoiled don't let him cut my hand off the doctor when he comes don't let him says there He's addressing his sister, urging her not to let her cut her hand. So, but the hand was gone already. The doctor put him in the dark of ether. So he's going to um, to sleep for a while or, or to feel um, nothing. He lay puffed his lips out with his breath. So he's, he's sleeping, but it seems that his sunset is also coming. And then the watcher at his balls took fright. No one believed. They listened at his heart little, less, nothing. And that ended it. So the boy dies. No more to build in there, nothing, nothing to, to stay, nothing for staying there. And they, since they were not the one dead, turned to their affairs and life continued its course. Here, the poem ends uh, with the tragic ending of the boy as well. Uh, but let's see about the title why the title is out out the title is actually an illusion and what is it what is an illusion let's see an illusion is a passing reference without explicit identification to a literary or historical person a place an event or another literary work or passage and here in the case of this poem we had it is another literary work or passage. And what is that work? William Shakespeare's Macbeth. When they said, when they actually informed Macbeth that Lady Macbeth had committed suicide, 
uh, Macbeth starts a soliloquy. And in that soliloquy, he, he laments the death of Lady Macbeth. She should have died hereafter. And with she should have died hereafter, we can have two different interpretations. Maybe she, he's saying that everyone dies and she should have died anyway. Or he's saying that she should have died later. She, it, it is an untimely death. There would have been a time for such a word. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Crips in this patter pace from day to day to the last syllable of record a time, and all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dust the death. Out, out, brief candle. And here our little boy is the brief candle. Life's but a walk in shadow, a poor player that struts and frets is out upon the stage, and then is heard no more. It's a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. And we see that there is another famous title taken from these famous lines. Sound and fury is also going to be alluded to by William Faulkner in his famous novel, The Sound and the Fury, who, um, whose first part, first chapter, Benja's part, almost signifies nothing if you don't know about the story. So thank you for listening. I hope I can see you in my next videos.